What's up, YouTube fam? Uh, it's been a long time. I did that other video not long ago, but it's been a long time since we've been real active on the YouTubulars. So I thought I'd give you guys a roundabout update on the shop and some of our cars and the yard and just all the stuff we've been really busy with the last few months. We'll get started with some of the fence work that I've done around. Still, still need to finish the handrail. Right? Muffin said, yeah, that handrail. That's on my long list of things to do. But anyway, I'll take you out here to this cool view. See my cool view? Side of the road is all mowed because of me. Anyway, I got a piece of fence up out here. Stuff we took down from somebody else's house that lives on the beach. And I'm going to do a little more fence work to this side. This fence is way deep inside the property line and that's no good. That's going to move out to the line and then we'll have a, a drive gate type of situation over there. Okay, you can come. Over there in that corner I've got a 4x4 four four post and that's my first first post in a brace for field fence all down that side and I'll show you over here on that side of the property where I got some more field fence started finally that's gonna go right from where it is and around the sideline and up the back line and then we'll be all fenced in so you can't wander off here in this corner I got the same situation where the previous people weren't real fence savvy so they just made sure to be way inside and way inside we're gonna have a cool rounded off corner there so we're not encroaching up on the roadway but we still get this fence where it goes and look around the corner here you can look down this fence line and you may be able to see if I quit shaking so much right over there is my field fence that's where the property line is so we're going to take this chain link and scooch it where it goes and make a couple terminals and make a cool little roundy round corner and then get this also way out here where it actually goes. I'll take you down here and check out the, the first bit of field fence we have going on. We're going to be deleting on that double drive gate when we go move in this fence and just put a single watt gate because that's all septic tank and leach field in there and why, why would you need to drive on that? You just don't. You don't. What's up y'all? I got a uh, home improvement type of video here today. I'm doing some more fence work. I haven't showed you before but I'll take you over there in a second. I put a little piece of chain link up on that side. All my fence is uh, take down from other people's houses where they uh, they got stuff replaced. And I got real lucky and got a nice tip on my last field fence job because the dude gave me all the old wire we took down. Which is what I'm setting up for over here. This is around the end of the day Saturdays. See I got a corner brace going on here. This is connecting this way instead of coming straight to our fence here <clears throat> around the house for the dogs because the people that put this fence up didn't know where the property line was and it's out here quite a few feet away so I'm putting my stuff where the property is and this is coming around connecting up that way Oops. then you see over down here the line follows that way to my little corner in the woods over there I got a gate opening out here that's 12 feet wide so I can have a circle drive type of situation. So that's cool. I gotta tell you it's way more fun building fence for me at my house than it is for you at your house. <laughs> this is just really cool. I had a feeling it would be this fun because I dreamed for years ever since I got good at building fences for other people. I dreamed about having the uh, the old leftover material and in my spare time building my own fence at my own house. And look at us go. I'll take you down here and show you the clearing and trimming I've done on my corner here. 
This is fun. We uh, just found this. That's a blueberry bush that was buried in all the other bushes. But here's my other corner. See my little metal tabby thingies? Those aren't going to stay on there. I haven't taken them off yet. <coughs> that was from whatever that whatever that was a part of before. <laughs> but anyway, right back in here somewhere, I'm probably going to have to make a little jog in around this tree or something. But I believe, I haven't pulled the string, I believe my line comes straight up in the middle of that tree, somewhere around in there. But look at all the trimming I has done. We have a lot of, we have a lot of fires. We've already had a lot of fires, we have a lot of fires in the future here. See, there's one. So over here, see this is where the line actually is, not way back that words. But this is what I got going on in that corner over there. It's just taller because it's probably going to be a six foot fence over there. But it's going to be the same situation. This is how we build our uh, field fence braces. There's a six inch piece of rebar in here and in there. So there's not a bunch of toenail mess to get... Um, to fall, fail later. If you just come up here and you put some toenails or even screws, you put some toe screws in there over time with that, that wood expanding and contracting and cracking up. See these are old posts, see how they're cracking? That will break loose from the tiny little toenail toe screw that you can get attaching it that way and they'll fall down. Mine won't fall down because there's a piece of metal in here that goes deep into a hole and this brace would actually have to come apart for this to fall down. And the fence and that brace wire there is holding it together tight. On down this way, see I left my post up high so I can run a strand of barbed wire if I want to or whatever direction we feel like going there. And it also would be kind of cool then because see that's five, fin five foot <laughs> chain link fence there and this is four foot field fence so if I do a few strands of the barbed wire then they're all five foot five foot symmetric cool right down here at some point we're gonna have our double drive gate in I've also got a little footage if you haven't seen it already in the video of me like getting ready to put this fence up putting the post in don't remember what all I recorded then so yeah you'll see but anyway there's gonna be a this is 12 foot wide opening here I'm gonna build two six foot wide gates that'll hang in there and then I got my circle drive action but for right now I just left it fenced off since it made it easy for me to hook onto that end and make one single pull all the way across and then there it is done after I build my braces I'll cut that wire out of there we've done a bunch of clearing into this corner here soon we'll have another brace coming off of that at an angular that tree is in the way. We're probably going to make a cool little box around the tree because we don't cut down big, cool, pretty oak trees. And then I'll have, I'll show you guys, we'll come back in a future video and y'all will be out there with me as we do some time lapsey type cool stuff, putting the fences down the side and across the back. But anywho, that's most of the fence work that I've done the last few months. So now we'll go, go to the shop update and the status of all the cars. I'm sure you guys have probably been wondering about the, the Crown Vic that was totaled out pretty bad and then we fixed it. It's still fixed, but I'll take you back that way. Moving back over here to the shop area. I got the Weiss car pulled back in here because after I get done with this video and we take a break, I'll be uh, pulling the front wheels off of this and we're finally getting to doing some well overdue shock replacements. I've got the front ones now. We're gonna get the uh, the rears later this weekend. In the rear we're probably doing something cool and getting the fancy shocks that you can add a little more pss, pss, pss to them to have an extra load in the- oh look there's a lizard. That way we can have a little extra load in the trunk because this thing often gets uh, bags of soil for gardening and all that stuff and concrete in it and whatnot. 
but that's going to be another video. As for this video and the little recappy, since the last time y'all saw this car, we've bought new front tires for it because the one tire got a little, I wouldn't say shredded, but it had a whole lot of its tread get worn off when everything smashed down on it. So that wasn't in good shape and we needed to get an alignment after I redid all the front end parts here recently. So it has new tires and the front ends nice and straight and it rides the road really, really nice now. Aside from it feeling like a boat with no shocks. So we're about to change that. Pretty sure I did something else to this since then, but I just don't remember. But yep, that's the main stuff that's happened with this car since y'all last seen it. We didn't have to do much besides the alignment and getting some new tires on it and everything was good to go. We've driven, I don't even know how many miles, but she's driven it back and forth to work for like the last two months or whatever. We haven't had any problems with it again, besides the stupid heater core failed again, and I'll have to replace that again. But we won't be using a heater core from an auto parts store because they, I've put like two of them in this car already and they've all failed the same way where I might even have it in here. I don't know. Why would you ask a thing like that? How would I know? I don't know. Anyway, the heater core is a little radiator that you get your heat from, and it's got all these little tubes that weld to the top and to the bottom, where because the water's at the top, set the bottom flows through the tubes. Magical air blows through it. You got heat anyway. Where it welds together is where it fails every single time so far. The original one, the first one I put in, and this one has also failed the same way as far as I can tell. I haven't pulled it out yet. But it seems like these, and I get them for like 30 bucks or $35 at the auto parts store, it seems like they might be garbage. So, yeah. Update on the heater core. <laughs> But other than that, the car has been doing really good, maintaining temperature and not, not overheating, not having any issues with stuff leaking and driving fine. So we just got to continue on with our shocks and all that fun stuff. So that's, that's where, where the car has been since y'all last seen it. On my pickup truck out here, since y'all have last seen it, I started getting some of my lights together. I got these orange turn signally guys. So now I have my running lights again because both the running lights were blown and they were clear before because the old housing had orange tint over the front of it. The new housings are all clear and snazzy so I had to get orange coated bulbs. I've also bought some bulbs for here and here which will be really special because I've never seen this truck with corner lights on it and I've been around it like 20 years. <laughs> all I got to do is I'll show you when we get to that. That'll be in another another video i've got some top end work we're doing to the motor and chasing down a, a misfire that's a, a result of some sticky valves so that'll be in that video but i gotta get in here these things were made kind of cheap and the uh you see the holes in there where the guy comes in that plastic is too thick and the guy doesn't fit so i gotta do a little oh no too far and then the thing will fit in there but other than me having a misfire issue this truck's been the same since y'all last seen it just driving back and forth to work every single day not having too many more not having any other issues than my new misfire which is a result of the motor having 250,000 300,000 I don't know it's th there's miles miles it's got them and, and it was in a, uh, I think I told you guys before a long time ago, it was in a safety loop mode, you know, when the sensors fell on this uh, old, old OBD2 original first EFI type of stuff. When a sensor fails, it just dumps a bunch of fuel. Well, it was in that type of loop mode for a long time, so there's, the engine's very sooty and nasty. So that's why the valves are hanging up now, but we're going to take care of that in the next video. Taking the plenum off and the valve covers, getting everything freed up and just cleaning it up nice. So anyway, that about has us wrapped up on the pickup truck and the, the car that we drive every day. 
haven't done too much with our project car here besides put a few more parts back on it so it's a little more complete inside the shop I got a new camper project well it's new to you guys it's not new to me and it's also not a table one day you'll see that I'll have it all cleaned off and we'll have a video all about this guy this camper is actually really really neat because when I was a little bitty guy I was camping in it with my family so this thing is just like my pickup trucks it's got a whole bunch of family history my parents have got a little nicer camper now and I got the, the hand-me-down pop-up so we're gonna get this thing all cleaned up and shined up good and get it popped up in the air it has one major issue where you turn these dials here at the front and there's a cable system and pulleys that lift the lid up we have one broken cable so we get to learn Oop, sorry muffin so we get to learn about pulling the side off or whatever we got to do to get to that cable and fixing that and then other than that all we got to do is clean it up and get all the cobwebs off of it and make sure we don't have any water intrusion issues because this thing was stored outside at my uh, my parents property but at least it's not now so we'll be able to open it all up in here and get everything clean and real dry and we'll have a camping video one of these days in there now as for the shop update what's up guys I got another shop video for you surprise see I'm working on the the grass mowing mower here there's also also an off-road mowing off-road mower back there that's why this is the grass mowing mower <laughs> anyway I'm to a point where I want to try to get some air in the tires so it's about time for me to set up my air compressor situation in my shop I took the uh, the compressor out of my metal shop building here because that's not where we want it it's going to be very loud and we're getting it hooked up in the shed over here hey look there it is how you doing compressor I need that I took this old short air hose off the front of it and I got this 50 footer from Walmart we're gonna get it all set up in the uh, in that shed over there so I don't have to listen to it I know this is gonna be like real short on cord but at least that sheds real close by so that's good <laughs> So at, at some, for right now, what we're going to do is have this hooked up in the shed. So whenever I want to use air, I can come open the shed up and uncoil the hose and pull it out. But in the future, we're going to have this thing hooked up in the shed. And I want to run a ditch, I mean a trench, underground over here to one corner or the other of this door. And we'll run some, uh, some pipe in the ground and have some fittings hooked up for that. And then inside the shop, we'll have a little stub and uh, one of these guys. We'll have like a stub up out of the wall and a ka -choo! So we can plug in an air hose inside the shop. But for now, we're going to get halfway there and get the air compressor hooked up and be able to roll a cord out and air up my tires and stuff. Yeah! Can you hear it, Muffin? You may be able to hear, I got the compressor set up in the shed and turned on. It's chooching up, and that thing makes a fair amount of noise. But over here inside the shop, oh, not very noisy. Especially if I was like working in here with that door closed and I had it plumbed inside the shop, you really wouldn't, wouldn't be disturbed by that at all. It's very nice, very nice. Compressors are loud. Look. I put together the little blower out of my cheap Walmart kit and I put an end on this short hose that was on the compressor. So now I have an extension. The Ethan the Fence Man shop has compressed air. Dusty battery. Dirt on the floor. Dirt on your chain? Dirt on your dirt? Not a problem! Oh, what's that? You need air in your tire? Well, we can do that at the Ethan the Fence Man shop. Professional.
Just look at him go. Air compressor came back on. Alright. We got the old truck fired up so I can mm, scooch the mower to the edge of the shop and work on getting air in its tires. Oh, look at the old, look at the old red truck with air in her tires. <laughs> See, here's my noisy out there. Here's my temporary little setup. That's pretty much roundabouts where it's always going to sit, but at some point we'll have the cool line run like through the floor right there and underground. But for right now, this is nifty cool. You can come in, open up the shed, flip the switch, unroll my hose, and air up a tire. Oh, okay, never mind. Now it's dark. Not too dark though, because I have lights. It's it's still a mess. Like like you know, it's a shop. But it is getting better, and I am working on it. See, I got my workbench. I added this shelf to the back of it which is made out of a pallet because I'm a poor construction worker redneck. So all I did is here is I took this trash pallet, added some boards in down low, so I have shelves, and it also made me lots of cool places to stick screws and hang and organize stuff, which is just snazzy because I have lots of wall space and we need to hang and organize things real bad around here. Over here on this side, that's the fender from our project here it's gonna get hung up ooh, dizzy hung up on the wall over there around that fender probably facing the opposite words to the right but back over here see I got a couple of these big pallets and right now it's just leaning against the wall but I'm gonna do the same thing with it where I come in and pick a few boards to pull off add some some TB4 and make shelves and stuff out of it and I'll have like a system of big pallet shells to organize all my junk so that'll be really special I've whittled down a lot on our pile of uh, um, totes and moving stuff that's in the shop so far I, or I think I may have gotten all the way down to I don't have any clothing and household items stored in here now so everything that's left to organize in here is actually shop stuff and there's a lot of it but yeah, been really, really, really busy with all sorts of stuff, and it's uh, it's slowly coming along. S working simultaneously on fences and projects and organizing of the shop and also doing a bunch of yard work and keeping things mowed and trimmed and pretty. And that almost has us caught up on the stuff we've been busy with, but since I'm carrying around everywhere, I might as well bring you into the yard and show you some of the, the green thumb type stuff we've been doing. So on top of all the other stuff that we've been busy with, over here inside the yard, we've been doing a little bit of gardening planting stuff. We've got some basil and some strawberries and some peppermint over here. And then we just got real excited about fruit trees on account of we finally live somewhere where you can have them because you got to have a fruit tree a long time before you can have fruit. So we've got an orange here. What was this orange? Orange. I don't remember what kind of orange it was, but it grows the big ones, you know? They're more like lemon. Yeah, and they're, they're more zesty like a lemon. Over here, this is a Kent mango. A if you didn't if you didn't know when you go to the store to buy fruit trees and plants and stuff get the little guys because all these were like fifteen dollars when we got them and now they're all the way up to a forty dollar plant if you want to get one that's about to produce that's a hundred dollar plant but this is a a lime something or another lime i don't remember this is a meyer lemon and we've got our garden bed over here that's just not looking too hot because we've seen an awful lot of too much of the rainfall and things have gotten flooded out really bad but we've got some tomatoes and we had some cucumbers they were doing really good too but you know we've had just an insane amount of rain and it was just too much on everybody over here these are squash straight neck squash 
that's a zucchini plant this enormous thing here is a uh, is an oak and then this is some fancy uh, orange yeah sweet snacking orange type pepper looks like I have one on it too oh not quite see I got one back there that's almost ready for the snacking those are pretty neat. If you don't like peppers, you may still enjoy those because it's really resembling of, it's kind of got the bell pepper crunch, but without much bell pepper taste in it, it just really reminds you of like an orange. Not like a big one, but like one of the little sweet tart type oranges. I don't know, it's a really weird flavor out of a pepper, but it's really good. And then, over this way, we planted some corn because why not? Just put some corn down. And these are looking cool, which is really neat. That just, to me, corn next to the fence line just seems real country, you know. Over here, there's this little bush. I don't know what it is. It was here when we got here, so we'll find out. And then this is a watermelon bed, because why not? So we made a six foot by six foot box out of some old posts. Got it all levelized and square and nice, because that's how we do things. We're carpenters. And then we planted this watermelon so i think at some point this thing is going to vine all around and just absolutely fill this bed with vines and we'll probably have watermelons all hanging all over the outsides and that should look really cool <laughs> but yeah i think that about wraps up my catching you up on the stuff we've been real busy on the last few months until i think of some of the other stuff that i've done that i can't remember right now but until one more thing, this other plant I got over here by the step that somebody else planted long before us, this is like a bunch of different lily bulbs or whatever, and different stuff has been blooming over the couple months we've been here, and this is the latest thing to pop up, which is pretty neat because we looked this up on the Googles, and this is a Cahaba spider lily which is actually kind of rare because it's only around the Cahaba River or something like that and it's only in a few states and the state that we live in isn't one of those states so apparently somebody went and found this plant and brought it back here we're not too far from Alabama so they probably found it in Alabama and brought it back here but I just thought that was neat it's like a rare flower not found in this state and it's in our backyard and hummingbirds they just think it's swell then Thank you guys for watching. I'll make sure to get on some more videos here quick for you. We got plenty more stuff going on. Even just this weekend with shocks on that car and pulling valve covers and intake plenums and cleaning up junk on that truck. And then we've got all my fun projects. So yeah, there's plenty more, plenty more stuff to do everywhere. But until we get to doing more stuff and you watching me doing more stuff, y'all have a wonderful day and thanks for watching me doing this stuff even though I didn't do much stuff and we'll see you in the next one.